Here we have a virtual version. This is a back projection, large screen display, where a scene is being projected onto this computer screen and it appears to rise up in three dimensions in front of the audience. Now this is with the aid of the audience wearing flicker glasses so that they see two different scenes. But it allows the people to work on a terrain map even though it's generated by a computer. Where's this going to show up in the future? Well, the most important place, in my opinion, that this is going to show up is in persistent virtual worlds. What happens right now when you create a virtual world for a war game, that world is created specifically for that war game and it's active and accessible and operational only for a few weeks during which that war game occurs. When the war game is over, you turn it off. What's going to happen is there's going to be a persistent virtual world maintained somewhere that describes a theater or a country or something all of the time. It's going to track the movement and the actions of military and important uh, civilian and political assets in those countries at all times. And so you can rehearse actions with that country anytime you want to from anywhere in the world. You can tap in, download the information about those objects and begin operating on it and it gives you a current right now picture of the world. It will also be used not just for war games, but then it becomes a source of information for world leaders to look at and say, replay, let me pick a politically correct country, North Korea. Let me replay all of the important events in North Korea over the last two weeks. And you can have the simulation play it back for you because you've been tracking it in the virtual world all the time. You can say, what do you want to know? And there it'll be. That's the most important thing that's going to happen with virtual reality. You're going to see it other places like crime prevention. There's no reason that the Olympic security teams couldn't create a virtual version of the Olympics and practice with it. Work, walk through it. Where are the danger points? Where is this going to happen? Where are people going to congregate? Where do you think there is a likely terrorist action? Where do we have holes? And work with it in the virtual world. And you might say, well, can't you just do that with a map of the thing? Yes, you can. But for the same reason that the military finds it advantageous to do it in a war game, an active, dynamic war game, that's the same reason you would bring your, your security team off of a static map into a virtual reality or a war-gamed environment. And then finally, stock market analysis and currency exchange rates. Simulation is being used to predict where the stock market is going, to predict how currency rates are changing. And people are trying to make millions of dollars predicting that just moments or hours before somebody else can predict it. Uh, reference in this area. Yes, go ahead. In, in, uh, virtual world military analysis country by country and the stock market analysis really requires a significant level of excellent intelligence. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Uh, that might be the, the most difficult part of using it, in fact. If you actually had that intelligence, how many people have access to that information, even though it exists? And I don't know that it doesn't exist right now. I don't think it does. But it might exist right now, and you, me, and everybody in this room are like, I'm not cleared for that. But once it does exist, the same situation will probably be true. You're not cleared for that, sadly. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I'll tie this into the entertainment world. In the entertainment world, there's a game out now, which most of you probably heard of, called Ultima Online. There's another game called EverQuest. And that's exactly what it is. It's a persistent virtual world. It's a fantasy world but it's active all the time. You can plug in anytime you want and you'll find hundreds of other people in there and you'll interact with them. It's more chaotic than what we're after in the military or political environment, but it exists. There is a persistent, always active virtual world and you can jump in and start interacting with it and be interacting with hundreds of people from all over the world right now. It's kind of sad that the gaming industry accomplished that before the military companies, countries have but it's been accomplished already. Interesting. Here's a great reference on wargaming. Uh, classic reference, in fact. 
It's a book by Peter Perla called The Art of Wargaming, and you have to buy it directly from the Naval Institute Press. That's the only place I know to get it. Uh, it describes the evolution of wargaming, the history of wargaming, and the major components of how to put a war game together. His perspective is primarily on board war games, but the ideas there are still being used in computer games right now. Uh, there's another game called the War Games Handbook. It's, it's out by Jim Dunnigan. It's not in print anymore, but Jim Dunnigan has permission to publish it on his website. So if you go to the Herudite website, which you'll get the URL later, uh, you can get that book online.